Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to be looking into adding some ammo to the player shooter just for that and then also looking into how we can play some particles and destroy the player when he actually does die. Okay, so let's first of all start by going into the shooter script which is where we should probably be holding our ammo. So in the state, let's do a public int and this will be, let's just say, ammo. And then we should also need a field at the top that should be an int which is for our max ammo. So let's do max ammo. And let's, uh, yeah, let's just make that five, for example. And then let's, we should also add some kind of reload time. So a private float reload time. We can make that, I don't know, 1.5 seconds, maybe. And then down here, similar to how we have a time to can shoot, uh, we also need a reload timer of some kind. So let's also keep that down here. Okay, cool. So when we're in here and we're in simulate and we can shoot, some kind of timer between being able to shoot of about a second. Um, then uh, we can also now, when we do shoot, here where we spawn it, we create it, we handle the things, we can then also just, I guess similar to here, we can do state.ammo uh, and just subtract one from that. Uh, and then here we should also check if the state.ammo is greater than zero. Otherwise, obviously, we can't shoot. So we can also out here just say if state.ammo or actually, I guess state dot reload timer is greater than zero. Then we can do state dot reload timer minus equal to the delta. And now all we also have to do is when we do run out of ammo, of course, we want to set the reload timer. So let's also just check here when we are subtracting an ammo. Then we can also do if state dot ammo becomes less than or equal to zero. Well, then we want to set the state dot reload timer equals to the reload. And I think that should mostly be it, unless I missed something. So let's go and give it a test. Um, oh, of course, and we forgot to ever actually set it. So we need to now set the initial state. I completely forgot about that. That's my mistake. Of course, we want initially the ammo to be set. So what you can do is we can just override get initial state. And then here we have to return a state. So we can just make var state equals to new state. You can easily just do that. You can do it however you really want. And then we, of course, need to return state. And now we can just modify it however we want. So we can do state.ammo equals to the max ammo, for example. Because we want to be able to start. So this will only be gotten in the very beginning. Like the first time this identity is seen, it'll run the get initial state to figure out, you know, what is the state I should be getting. So let's try now. And now when I shoot, you can see we shoot one, shoot two, shoot three, shoot four, shoot five. And now when I click, I cannot shoot anymore. And then in a little bit, I'll continue clicking. I should be able to shoot, but I'm not. Okay, so clearly we've done something wrong. And this is actually perfectly fine. Let's just say it was planned. Um, because I wanted to show you anyway, also being able to debug with the state. So as you notice down here, there's some fields. We can see the state, you can see the input. And right now it doesn't really sh say much. It just says player shooter plus input and player shooter plus state. That obviously doesn't mean a whole lot. But we can make it mean something by actually logging it out by doing the two string. You guys might be familiar when you call two string to things. Well, the thing is when you make your own structure, your own classes and so on, you can actually yourself identify what does two string even mean. And that's actually what they use out there in the editor. So what we can just do is we can make our strings. We can make a string and we can just call this, I don't know, result, for example. And then we return the result. And now here we, we will be modifying the result. Uh, so here, of course, this should be equal to just nothing for now. Or I guess we can just make it equal equals to whatever we want to show first. So it could be time to can shoot. So we can just do that. And let's give it a name, time to can shoot, like that. And then let's make a new line. So let's do result plus equal to. And you can always do the backslash n. That'll make a new line. And then we can say ammo, and that'll be the ammo. And now we can duplicate this line as well. And this one can show the uh, reload timer. And this can be the reload timer. This way we can actually in edits are very easily read and see our states. You can do the same thing for input. So now if we go out here, you can notice now you can see them here. You can see time to can shoot, ammo and reload timer. Now we can actually try and see and visually debug what's actually going wrong. So you can see now when I shoot, you can see the time to can shoot goes up, counts down to zero. Does the same thing, you can see the ammo counts down. Let's try and see what happens now when we reach zero, the reload timer goes down. And time to can shoot is zero. Oh, but of course, the, I'm silly. We never set the ammo back up to five. So let's try and do that here. So here we're essentially counting the reload timer. Uh, so this is while the reload timer is still running. And then I guess in here we can just check if we reach so the state that reload time has become less than or equal to zero. Well, then we set the state that ammo equal to max ammo. There we go. So I hope this makes sense. 
So that means if the reload time is running, we'll count it down. And if while counting it down, it has now become less than or equal to zero, well, then we want to reset it. So now we should actually be adding that one. This is why visually debugging an editor can be so damn useful. Now you can see four, three, two, one, and zero. The reload timer goes down and boom, now we see five ammo again. So now we can shoot again. So now we successfully just added reloading very easily. And as you can see, everyone holds everyone's state. So if we take the other player, we can also see his state here. So as I shoot, you'll notice his timer and ammo and everything will also move. Because again, it's prediction. So everyone is essentially simulating the exact same state. All right, cool. So now we have that working. Now let's try and work on the visuals of the player actually dying. So I think we call this player health. And then in here, you can see we just have a player has died. Um, so let's also in the states, just quickly, I, I always like just making a pool for is, has, is dead. Just so we always know, you know, was he, was he dead last state? Is he only dead this state? And so on. Um, and essentially now, in the update view, we essentially only really check the health. But I think let's actually modify this in the simulation. So, oh, actually, we can just do it when we do take damage. That's just as easy. So when we do take damage, we can then also check the current state dot health. And I guess we want to check this. So if current state dot health goes less than or equal to zero, and the player is not dead, and that's important here, current state dot is dead. So is he not dead? Well, then we want to set him to dead. So we can do a current state equals to true. Or current state that is dead equals to true. So now we essentially have a toggle here that only happens once. So this log here will call constantly when you're dead. Um, however, we don't want that. Obviously, when we call a uh, when we make a, a particle or something like that, which by the way, let's just make that real quick. When you make a particle or something like that, you don't want you obviously don't want it spawning constantly. You want it spawning once when he does die. And we can do that. So this will just be, let's do death particles. And there's two ways we can do that. First of all, we could, for one, we could make a toggle inside the update view. This isn't wrong. When you're in update view, we're out of the prediction loop, remember? So now we can start using dynamic fields. So it's fine here to just do scene as dead, for example. And this will default to false, as pools just will. Uh, and here, what we can do here, we can do if it has not been seen as dead and the verified state, dot value confirms that he's dead that value that is dead this now means now he is seen as dead and this means we will only get this one once so let's try that player died and just to make testing easy i'm going to give myself double ammo i'm going to give myself a much quicker time to shoot in between shots let's just do something like 0.3 so we can shoot a lot quicker and this should be enough to kill pretty quickly so now we should see that it should only in both editors ever run once so i'm going to hit him Hit him again. Let's stop him here a second. Uh oh, uh oh, it's all running wild now. There it goes. Now you can see players died, and as we keep hitting him, he doesn't die more times. We only see the log once. This is not a bad way of going about it. This is a perfectly fine and valid way of checking whether the player has died, and only doing it once. We've essentially just made a gate. But Pernet, luckily for you, or Prediction already handles a case like this for you as well, where you can just call it in simulation, like essentially where we're setting it being dead. And this is called the predicted event. So now we can just delete what we just made, which again is a fine way of going about it. You can totally do that, which this is called a predicted event. Uh, and the predicted event is obviously part of the prediction loop. And essentially what it allows, uh, let's, let's call it on death, for example. What it essentially allows is it allows us to subscribe and unsubscribe to it however we want. So in the later wake, I can't remember if I already showed this in an earlier tutorial, but the later wake is essentially like the on spawn method uh, for predict stuff. So we have everything ready in here. So we need to, first of all, create the event. It's a class, obviously, right now it's not created, and we can't just do this because it needs some stuff in here that we don't yet have. So what we can do is we can do this equals to a new predicted event. Let's just make it very clear that it's a predicted event. And we need to give it the prediction manager. We need to give it the identity that it is, that it, it's regarding. In this case, it's just this identity. And I think that's how you're mostly probably going to be using it. It's just this identity. But you technically could make events for other identities. That's fine too. Um, so now we have this on death. Of course, first of all, we do need to subscribe and unsubscribe to it. Uh, typically, we can just do something like it's still inside late awake. We can just do add a listener and then on on death. And then we can also end on destroy, for example, and do uh, on death dot remove listener and we can remove the on death listener. And now we can make the method, the on death method. And this will essentially now when we invoke it uh, in here. So for example, here where we take damage and we set ourselves to death. We can just also invoke this. 
now we invoke it in here, meaning this will only ever be called once as well as a view. So this is a good place to also use a visual. Uh, and so let's try and do that. So let's do on death and then let's uh, instantiate the death particles at the transform position with just kernel dot identity as rotation. Something like that. So now we should spawn the particles. Obviously, it's probably a good idea just checking that the particles exist before we shoot ourselves in the foot. So now let's just go and make some quick particles just to test. Yeah, fine. I'm just going to go with something like that. And then obviously I'm going to make them not... Uh, I'm going to play, make them play on a week, awake, but I'm not going to make them loop. And then let's just save these on the prefabs, death particles. And now let's feed them to the player. All right, so here we go. Now let's go and test. Uh, and actually, again, to make it even easier, let's just give our player 20 health. So it only needs a single hit. And so now when we kill him, boop, you can see that the particles popped up. And as you can see, they only happened once. So if I want to kill him, boop, there go, now the particles popped up. Now we obviously just need him to disappear. So now on death is an event, but remember it's a view event. So this is not where we should make him disappear. Technically you can, but it's not a great place to do it. I would just do it in here where we invoke it from essentially. So we're part of the simulation. So after we've invoked that, we can then just call prediction manager, that hierarchy, that delete, and then we want to delete this game object. And that should mostly be it. Now he should be able to die. So now we shoot him, boop, and there we go. Now he disappeared. And as you can see, now he died, those particles spawning, and it's really that easy actually working with visuals. So just be aware that the prediction the predicted event is a really good way of moving from simulation to view, which is sometimes what can be a little bit tricky, especially with sort of single calls like this. And so that's exactly what's that, what that is there for to help with. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something new. We once again got to implement a few things. And remember to let me know in the description if there's specific things you'd like for me to cover. And of course, I'll look into that. Cheers, have a great day. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I chat with you in the Discord server.